Hi everyone, uh, very happy new year to you all. This is the first video for the 2025 for me. And today we're going to look at something very important that's relevant to the Windows OS and that is Windows Registry. Learning this topic might sound a little bit complicated, but I'll try my best to keep it simple. This video is targeted to forensic experts and those who want to learn about forensics and if you're just curious about Windows Registry, because I'll be going on with the uh, most basics. Okay, first let's start with what a Windows Registry is, but in a simple language first. The uh, Windows Registry is kind of like a huge file cabinet which stores all settings in uh, as in digital information so one drawer might have uh, documents or information on install programs and another drawer will have information on how the computer should run uh, i'll give an example so say your computer needs to check something like what color uh, your desktop background is so they just have to go to that particular uh, draw in the file cabinet and grab that answer. If I use a bit of a formal technical language to explain it, Windows Registry is a hierarchical database that is used by Microsoft Windows OS to store configuration settings and other options to hold critical information including the system hardware configurations, software settings and other user preferences. So the registry is organized into a series of keys and values, which I will be explaining later in this video. Okay, now before we move more into the registry and what it does, let's first learn about how to access it. So this will make everything that we talk about later much easier to understand. So the first thing is we need to open the run dialog. So uh, to do this, you have to press Windows key and the R key at the same time and this will bring up the small box at the bottom left of your screen. Uh, once you've got the run, uh, then you have to type in reg edit and press enter. This command opens the registry editor which is the tool we use to view and edit the Windows registry. So you may get a pop-up asking for permission to let the registry editor make changes to your computer and you just have to go ahead and click yes to continue. And once you're in, uh, you'll see the registry editor open up. It's a bit of like, a, like the file explorer with folders on the left side pane. And these folders are different parts of the registry where settings are stored. So you can click through them to see the keys and values inside. Uh, a quick note here, before you make any changes in the registry, not now, I mean, we're not gonna make any registry changes today uh, in this video, but as in, if you get a chance to make a registry change you have to make a backup first because this allows you to restore it in if something happens uh, in some way because changes to the registry keys can make the system very unstable the next you will learn on the structure of the registry so the windows registry might seem complex at first like i said before but it's very organized so the registry structure starts with something called the hives the hives store everything from system-wide settings to individual user preferences. And by organizing this data into separate hives, Windows can quickly look into the right place to find the information it needs when required. So there are five main hives. I'll give a small introduction to each one of them. First one is the HK classes root. It, it, it also goes in abbreviation. So this one is HKCR. So this stores the file associations and how files are handled by the OS. So file association means uh, it, it uh, helps Windows know which program should open a particular type of file. Like for example, a .txt file should be opened by which application. And in addition to file types, this key also, this hive also manage and reuse uh, software components so that different programs can work together smoothly. The next hive is the HK current user, HKCU, and this contains settings and preferences specific to the currently logged in user. And these settings can include things like user specific configurations for the desktop, applications, system preferences, and so on. So like I said, remember this is only to the user who is currently using the machine. 
Next hive is the HK Local Machine, HKLM. This will contain settings and configuration information for the entire computer and it does not matter which user is logged in right now. These settings will affect the system as a whole, including hardware settings, such as the device drivers and details on how to control your hardware components. Then uh, details on software settings or configurations, which includes information like how Windows or applications should behave then services that should start automatically and it can store information about software versions, configuration settings and license information as well. Next, the security settings will also be here. It ensures that system behaves securely and restricts unauthorized access or other uh, actions that are not uh, supposed to happen. Next, we have HK users, HKU. This is a key in the Windows registry that contains the user-specific settings and profiles for all the users on that particular computer, including the current user. Some of the things it holds are individual desktop preferences like the background image, screen savers, pin programs, and maybe toolbar positions and so on. So basically, it ensures that each user on the system has their own unique and personalized computing experience. Next, we have the HK Current Config HKCC. This will contain only settings related to the current hardware profile which is in use at that moment, meaning it focuses specifically on active configuration for hardware devices and system settings uh, that are used at that moment. And uh, these will contain uh, details such as the display settings, printer configurations, and active hardware device settings. So now you know the hives in general, uh, let's look at the rest of the structure. So each hive is divided into keys and sub keys, which are like folders inside the main folders. And these structures contain, uh, the, the main purpose of this structure, uh, the, how, it, how the structuring has happened is to make sure that Windows can find the information more easily. I'll give an example. Inside the HK local machine hive, there's a key called software, which contains sub keys for each installed software. So this makes it easy for the system to find settings for that particular software at a particular time. So within each key or sub key, you will find values, which are the actual data that Windows uses in specific times. So if I give an example again, uh, for the actual key set desktop, the value name will be the wallpaper and the data will be the image file of the wallpaper like wallpaper.jpg. So I hope you got an understanding on the basic structure of the registry as well. So how is the registry useful for forensic investigators? The Windows registry is a very important resource for investigators because it stores a lot of valuable information about system configuration, usage, even the user's behavior can be determined by just looking at the registry values. So um, let's look at a few examples of how it can help you. So the first point is on user activity and behavior. The registry contains data that reveals how a user interacted with that system or what programs they used, how many times they have run it and so on. So uh, investigators can analyze these entries to reconstruct those user activities or identify signs of malicious behavior. An important uh, key that contains uh, where we can track the recently accessed files and programs is this. The HK Current User Software Microsoft Windows Current Version Explorer Recent doc, Docs Path, which stores recently opened files which can be useful in investigating a user's actions. And it can also give information about system configuration and changes. The registry stores, as I said, system wide settings that are very critical for understanding how the computer was configured at a specific time. And this can help the investigators to understand how the system environment worked and the network settings and what software was installed. For example, to get the information of installed software, you can use 
this particular uh, game. It will have the versions, the install programs, the versions and the installation parts. And that will help you to know what were installed on the system at that time of the incident. So next main point is the evidence of malicious activities. If you all want to identify any potential signs of malware or a malicious activity through the registry, then uh, you know many types of malware ought to alter or create registry entries to ensure persistence. Persistence means they they are active even after the system restarts and so on. Yeah. And um, so if it's the, an example for this is if, uh, if there's an auto starting malware they will add entries under this particular key to automatically start when the system boots. So investigators can analyze all these entries to identify and remove uh, the malicious programs. Next is if you want the network information. So registry holds information about specific settings that can be useful to understand uh, how uh, the system interacted in terms of the network so the network configurations are included in this key and contains data related to all the network settings including the ip addresses dns servers and so on so the final example that i want to give is if you want to identify any connected devices you know a registry contains information about devices connected to the computer including the usb devices so this can be valuable uh, information for investigators when determining which devices were connected to the system uh, for that particular investigation so this key keeps a track of usb devices that were connected to the system this will help investigators trace when a specific usb device was plugged in to that particular computer so i hope this give you a basic understanding of the registry uh, if you all want a further explanation i think i can try to give a demo maybe how to extract the registry for forensic purposes and so on i will try that uh, but in this video uh, it's more about the basics and understanding what registry is even if you're just curious on you know how to access it and so on and if you have any questions you can drop them down in the comment section and i'll be answering thank you